Well, a long time ago, in a galaxy far away, I uh, stumbled upon an old um, video uh, from a gentleman calling himself Penn Says. I kind of had, had stumbled on this on my PSP 3000, um, and I was downloading podcasts from a place called Crackle. and. Uh, I don't even know if Crackle still does podcasts, but for some reason I, I uh, chanced upon um, some podcasts and the the name of the, I, it appeared to be a series, it appeared to be a series, and it was called Pen Says. And now since that time, that was probably two or three years ago, uh, when I first, when PSP 3000s uh, just came out, but um, now I've come to learn that he um, is a magician, and he um, is pretty well known on the internet and, and on YouTube in particular. This, this uh, video response here may be, um, his original may be on YouTube, but I know it was on Crackle at one point. The title of his video was Only Atheists Can Be Moral. And I, I want to briefly address this and not spend much more time than he did in his original video in responding to his. Um, but I do want to say at the, <clears throat> at the outset, excuse me, that this is one of the biggest misconceptions that atheists and agnostics and skeptics have about Christianity. Um, it is embodied in that particular um, video and that is to wit that um, Christian morality stems from a system of external rewards or, or a particular external reward such as dwelling eternally in paradise um, with God. Um, that is one of the biggest mistakes, one of the biggest pre uh, misconceptions at, at preconception as well. I think it has to make the top ten of the biggest myths that, that atheists hold about um, Christian believers and Christian belief. Um, Let's take a look at this for a couple of minutes. One of the key New Testament passages which does talk about a stimulus or reward for a particular Christian act of devotion or sacrifice is the one who, in referring to Jesus Christ, says, who for the joy set before him, <clears throat> excuse me, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. That's a very um, commonly cited verse in practically every Christian denomination, practically every church. Um, I would, I'm just citing that off the top of my head. Most Christians know that by heart, um, or have heard it at least a dozen times. Um, that verse pretty well refutes the whole notion that Christians are just out for a particular reward, um, such as um, of avoiding hell or, or, or living eternally in paradise with God. Um, <clears throat> the idea is that this is Jesus Christ now who um, has been um, God in the Godhead, has been separate from human affairs. He comes now to dwell with us. He makes those sacrifices and he lives here on earth and he's subject to um, humility, um, uh, embarrassment, um, uh, all kinds of, of torture as we learn leading up to the cross and the passion of Jesus Christ. Um, ridicule even from his own followers. Um, denial three times by one of his um, beloved disciples, Peter. Um, so this is um, Christ now who is enduring these things for the joy set before him. It's not um, for some kind of 
um, some sort of external reward that he, some kind of carrot that's being held out in front of Jesus the whole time. Now, as Christians, we are taught to emulate uh, Jesus um, insofar as we can, um, you know, given the, the work of the Holy Spirit. I mean, we're not to try to slavishly uh, duplicate everything that Jesus did here on earth, but he is a model for our behavior. Um, and however imperfect, however imperfectly we follow that model, it's still there um, as a model uh, for us. And <clears throat> this idea of not um, not seeking some kind of status or some other um, reward um, just for the joy, um, basically the internal consequences, the um, obedience is kind of its own reward. Um, would maybe be a, a follow as a consequence from this passage. And um, now let's take a look at maybe some other passages in the New Testament that shed light on this issue. One of the uh, most misunderstood passages, um, at least by those who don't have a spiritual understanding of the New Testament and its background and why it was written, one of those is uh, Philippians um, chapter 2. Um, and this can be kind of a misleading um, focus that might get some outsiders thinking that, well, this is Christians would just be externally motivated by rewards in some fashion. I'll just go ahead and, and start reading at verse uh, 12 of chapter 2. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who, has, who is at work in you enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Now, when read, care, if read, read superficially, one might sort of compartmentalize this as a, 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 a teaching that just indicates that Christians are kind of externally motivated or rewarded. However, a deeper look at the passage suggests something far, far different. Um, one of the things that's important to note is you work out, Christians are told to work out, not work for their sal salvation with fear and trembling. Now, if they were working for that would be a whole nother ball game. Whole nother issue would be at work. If they were working for their salvation, that means they would have to do just the right things, perform just the right deeds or the right amount of good deeds in order to enter enter heaven or to obtain salvation. But that's not the case. They're working out something. So there's something that's already taken place, which is their salvation, and that's indicated in the following verse. So you kind of have to read the context. You have to look at the big picture. In the big picture, it's God is the enabler. He is the one motivating. He is the one giving grace. Otherwise, um, the good deeds could not really take place. So unless there is, um, unless he's behind it, it's really not going to happen in terms of doing what's right or doing good deeds or anything like that. So that's a very, um, it's, it's easily misunderstood, but when one takes a deeper look at the passage, um, some of those misconceptions are cleared up. Now let's go to another passage in the Gospel of Matthew. Now, Here's another interesting passage which suggests a different motivation for doing what is right or even um, knowing what is right um, than on the, um, the idea of being believers being externally motivated by the threat of hell or the promise of heaven um, in uh, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5 in what is called um, the central body of teachings called the Sermon on the Mount. Um, Christ talks a little bit about how believers are to stand out, be different from um, the normal uh, run-of-the-mill folks in society. They have um, a, a special duty. Um, they have a special calling. And he talks about them being um, the salt of the earth in Matthew 5, verse 13. And in 14, he talks about them being the light of the world. Of course, these are metaphors, ways to explain um, the impact, how um, believers can um, remedy some of the wrongs and the ills in society. Now, in uh, verse 16, we get an interesting statement about um, motivation for doing the good, doing what is right. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. So here we have another um, reason for um, doing what's right besides um, 
the one given by um, Penn in the Penn Says uh, video, and that he also attributes to Madeleine O'Hara, and, and this is a fairly, uh, again, this is just a fairly common misconception. Um, so the idea is to attract, to, to do things um, that you know are right, that you believe are right, is in some way an attractant. It's attracting others um, to give glory to God, who is, we believe, is ultimately responsible for all of the um, good deeds done. Um, so there again is a different um, different type of motivation than that suggested. And these are just a small sampling um, of passages in the New Testament. Uh, further exegesis could be done on these verses um, explaining that it has nothing to do with an external system of rewards and punishments in terms of how the believers, um, Christians, are to act or to know what's right or to do what's right or anything like that. Um, basically what we have is a very old um, uh, straw man argument um, against the Christian faith um, and certainly there there have to be um, there has to be a better um, argument if one wants to make the case um, that only um, atheists in terms of their belief system in rejecting God can do what is right well thank you for uh, watching and um, we I look forward to seeing what sort of uh, comments uh, we have on this video bye bye